Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be creating a fun isometric scene in Blender. This is going to be to promote my new contest, which will be to create an isometric scene. Um, I will still be able to announce the details within hopefully the next like week or two. Um, so for now, I won't be able to include any details on here, but this is basically gonna help you to be able to set up your own isometric scene and show you an example of how to go about doing that. So let me go ahead and X out of this example here. I am in a new Blender document and I basically have no plan, but what I wanna show you guys how to do is how to set up your isometric camera to be perfectly positioned to create that isometric look. And then we'll go ahead and model a simple room, add some lighting and go ahead and render an image or an animation, probably more likely though an image. So let's go ahead and set everything up. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just add in a cube for reference. As you can see, it's perfectly centered in our scene. I'm gonna click on our camera, go over to our camera settings. I'm also going to go to the camera view. As you can see right now, we're in the perspective view. I'm actually gonna switch this over to orthographic. And as you can see, the whole entire way that the scene looks is going to change, right? Because we want this orthographic perspective. For now, we're gonna leave the scale as it is. And then we're gonna pop out this little tab right here. And we're gonna adjust these values. So for the X, I'm going to choose seven. For the Y, negative seven. And then for the Z, we'll just choose five for now. Now, as you can see, nothing's centered quite yet. So what we wanna do is we want to make our Z rotation 45 degrees, and then our X rotation 52.7 degrees. Now at this point, we wanna move our camera up, holding control and shift. And that looks perfect at about 7.5. You guys can copy these exact values. This is essentially your perfect isometric scene. Um, I believe 52.7 degrees is the value that you're looking for when it comes to creating these scenes. So this should be perfect. Um, the only thing left to really do is set up our dimensions for our project. In this case, I'm gonna go for 1920 by 1920. And then I'm gonna go to my camera settings again, and I'm just gonna zoom in my scale here. So now we are perfectly centered and we're all set up to create our isometric scene. So this is perfect. This is where we wanna be. Our cube is pretty much perfect on every angle. And this is exactly what we want for our, our little room that we're gonna create. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my rendered view, switch over to Cycles, GPU. I'm just gonna add in a quick HDRI just to give us some lighting here. Let's go ahead and open up our HDRI folder and I think I'm going to go with this HDRI. Now, you're not going to see the HDRI in the background because when you have isometric camera enabled, you can't see the background. Um, I don't know why that is, you just can't. Now, if I click out of the camera view, you can see that we do have our HDRI, but when you're in your camera view, you will not be able to see the background. But that's okay, because we're gonna be adding in a floor plane. So let's go ahead and add in a mesh object uh, plane, and then we're gonna scale that up by 20. Oh, sorry, <laughs> scale that up by 10. You do not need it to be 20. Um, I'm just gonna bring it right below our cube. I'm also gonna give the floor plane just a dark color so we can differentiate it easier and then I'm gonna bring it right below our cube here. Now again, guys, this cube right here is just for reference. We're going to be building everything around it. So if you guys want to, you can just apply a wireframe modifier to that and increase that thickness just so we can kind of see the outline of where we'll be creating everything. Um, another thing I'm going to do is show you guys quickly in the shading tab how to adjust your world, uh, your world rotation. So if we go ahead to our rendered view here, we're gonna add in a couple of nodes, a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. And I'm just gonna plug everything in as follows. Now, you're not gonna notice any difference until you adjust this Z rotation, but as you can see, we can now change our lighting for our scene. So I'm gonna snap back to the camera, just maybe increase the brightness of my floor a little bit, and then I'm gonna hide the wireframe so I can see what this lighting is gonna look like. And I'm just gonna adjust our lighting until I think I like what I see. This could be really interesting. We could have a window with some really nice lighting coming in. I think I like this lighting right here where we have a, uh, a harsh shadow coming across at like a 45 degree angle. Now again, guys, you guys can decrease this plane back down. That's fine. Um, so far, so good. So let's go ahead and start setting up our scene. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna duplicate this cube. I'm gonna hide the other one. I'm gonna get rid of that modifier and then I'm gonna scale it SX by 0.1 because I wanna have a nice thin wall. And we're gonna be using this wall and duplicating it for all the sides of our isometric scene. Go ahead and apply that scale and then unhide our other cube. 
take our small cube GX to bring it along the X axis and try your best to just line it up along the edge there. I'm gonna go with negative 0.9. That should perfectly align it to the edge. Go ahead and hide your main cube again. Duplicate this, Shift D. Go ahead and rotate it on the Z axis, 90 degrees. Go to our top down view, G to move. Holding control, we're gonna snap it into place there. As you can see, it's perfectly snapped into place. And then we'll create, we'll do one more. We'll duplicate that again. Rotate it on your Y axis, 90 degrees. And again, top down view, holding control. We're gonna snap that into place. And then we're gonna move it underneath everything else. Let me just move the floor plane down a little bit. We're gonna take this and we're gonna move it down. Holding control and shift, you can fully customize where this is gonna end up. That looks perfect. Now there's one, one more thing I wanna do. We're probably gonna to have to scale these in on the X axis. So on the X, I'm gonna put 0.9. I'm sorry, not the X, the Y. 0.9 and then I'm gonna go to my top-down view and I'm gonna move it just enough over there that looks perfect and then this one as well we're going to do 0.9 for our um, Y dimension and we're just gonna move it down GY holding control that looks good so now as you guys can see everything is pretty much lined up how we want it um, don't worry about this little corner. You shouldn't be able to see that in the render. But as you guys can see, we have this nice isometric room that we are setting up. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I have my scale applied to all of these right here. Object, apply scale. I'm gonna bring my floor up just a little bit more, just so it's barely touching. And I think I'm also gonna make my floor metallic with kind of a low roughness here. I think that looks really nice. I just like the way that looks, so we're gonna go with that. Now go ahead and click on your cube here or your rectangle at this point. Add a modifier, add a bevel modifier. Zoom in here and let's go ahead and fine tune this. Let's give this five segments. Holding shift, we're gonna really adjust the bevel here. We're just gonna give it the slightest bevel. Now, as you can see, we have a little gap, so we're gonna need to uh, squeeze these in just a little bit more to compensate for that. Go ahead and click on these other two and shift click your last one. Control L copy modifiers and as you can see our bevel is now copied over to everything else now we're gonna need we're gonna need to squeeze these in just a little bit so I'm just gonna bring this over on the x-axis GX just ever so slightly same with this one just so they're barely touching um, a little bit of light is peeking through but we, we can put in some like molding on the floor or something like that to compensate for that as well so far so good I'm really liking the way this looks um, I might be inclined to stretch one side out on the x-axis a little bit. Let me just go ahead and give this one or so. 1.1 might do it. GX. SX to scale to fine tune. That looks pretty good. Now, you guys can really handle this any way you want. I'm gonna go with this for now because I think it looks good. Now, we can start placing objects in our room and we can add a light source into our room as well. Like I said, guys, this is what we have so far. This is basically your isometric scene with your walls. And now we can start adding in objects pretty much wherever we want to add. Um, so at this point, you just kind of have to get creative with what you're going to choose to add here. Now, another quick thing I wanna show you guys though before we add objects inside if you really want this to look even cooler, you can add some depth of field. So go ahead and enable that depth of field. Click on your bottom cube. And as you can see, the edges are just slightly blurred. So when we go to actually render this thing, we can make it look like sort of a macro shot, which is gonna look really cool. Um, for now, I'll leave the f-stop at, at 0.5. Um, again, you guys can use your own textured floors as well. Now, this would be a great point for me to shout out someone who actually gave me a free texture pack that normally you would have to pay for. So let me go ahead and open that up real quick because I do wanna show you guys um, this incredible texture pack from a friend. Sorry, quick shout out. Let me just find the correct folder for you guys. Material library, here we go. All right, so this guy gave me marble materials and wood materials. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the wood materials and just do a quick shout out because if I'll be damned, these things are so nice. So these are the materials right here. Um, some of the previews for them, they're all procedural, procedurally made. I believe the texture pack is like 10 bucks or so. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. But um, look how awesome these materials look. They're so nice. And I think I wanna copy the wood for either the base floor or the actual floor for the isometric um, design for the building. 
But what I'm probably going to do is just duplicate this once and copy over some materials real quick. We just go ahead and take a look. This one's nice too. See, look at that nice wood wooden feel. Now this is an icosphere, so you're not gonna really notice the detail too much, but if you look at this one from our, from a side perspective, look how nice that wood grain looks. It looks so good. Um, well done. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these three materials over. Go ahead and open my project back up. I'm gonna go ahead and paste these all in. And I'm just gonna put them over here. Go ahead and see what that looks like. So the other thing, we're gonna have to adjust some of the scaling, but as you guys can see, we do have our materials in here now. Let me just go ahead and apply that to the floor here. <laughs> as you guys can see, it looks awesome, and we have these awesome scratches that they included for the material. So again, sorry, have to shout this guy out. He was very generous with giving me these shaders for free so that I could review them, and I'll try to do a more thorough review in the future, but I am very, very pleased with how awesome these look. Um, it, it just They just look so good, so professional. Um, let me go ahead and apply that scale there. It, it just looks so good. I'm very, very happy with them. Very, very happy. So very, very nice job. Um, I think I'm gonna actually increase the, let's see, you, you can, there's literally so many things you can adjust here. They made it all procedural and all completely customizable. So this is just fantastic. The roughness, the wood color, everything. Incredible job, incredible job. Wow. All right, we'll come back to that later, but that looks so good. The lighting looks a little bit too bright for the wood here, so I might actually adjust it in the shading tab real quick. I wanna make sure we can clearly see that wood grain. That looks pretty decent. Again, you guys do not have to match my exact lighting. I'm just doing what I think looks good. I think it looks pretty good. I think I like that right there. I'm pretty happy with that for now. We can always come back to it later. So as you guys can see, we have our wood grain set up. Um, I think I might apply a wood grain to the bottom here too. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this to look cool. Wow, that's awesome. And just like that, you already have a floor with amazing materials. Having these materials, guys, go ahead and message me so I can send you the link to them. It's just fantastic. It's, it's good to have these materials on hand and be able to actually quickly add them to your scene. It just makes the... It just makes life so much easier. I'm gonna turn this roughness down, um, turn the specular up a little bit, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a, a small light in here. So I think I'm just gonna add in a cube. I'm gonna scale it down, S.25. And I think I'm gonna make this into like some kind of a corner lamp. But first I wanna go ahead and move it to the corner. So let me go ahead to my top down view. Let me move this with G and then holding control and shift, I'm just going to put it right in the corner there. That looks good. And then I think what I'm gonna do is just go into my solid view real quick. And let's just go ahead and model this into a, a very quick lamp. Firstly, I'm going to duplicate, move this up a little bit and scale it down. This will become our light source and this will be the lamp. Let's go ahead and tab into edit mode. Now let's go ahead and add in an inset down here. Let's go ahead and select that bottom face. Let's inset that. And then let's move it up on the Z axis. That looks good. We'll just move it up just a little bit more. That's perfect, and this is gonna become our lamp shade. Now I'm gonna go ahead back out of X-ray mode. I'm gonna add in a slight bevel to that. Also, I'm gonna apply my scale. Cool, and then I'm just gonna increase my bevel a little bit. Oops. That looks good. And we'll just increase those segments. Right click, shade auto smooth bring our light source down within our um, our lamp here. That looks good. Let's go to rendered view. Now, right now you're not gonna see anything, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a transmissive material to the outer part of our lamp. And I'm gonna add in uh, to our other cube, I'm gonna add in an emissive material. So now, as you guys can see, we have this really cool looking uh, diffused lamp, but I'm also going to make this probably like a yellowish color, just slightly yellow. And I'm gonna make that strength like five, probably. As you guys can see, we have a nice little lamp in the corner. Um, the only thing left to do is just create a little stand for it. So again, let's go ahead and duplicate this, bring it down, scale it in, S, Z, and we'll just have it kind of come up like that. We'll go to our side view, align it more or less pretty perfectly. That looks fine. Go back to our, our view. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the material here to a metallic shader low roughness, go 
go back to my solid view, add in a bevel modifier. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this scale. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and increase these uh, subdivisions to make it kind of circular like that. That looks perfect. Right click, shade auto smooth, pop back over to my rendered view. That's looking pretty good. And then again, if we wanna create a stand for this, we can do that as well by duplicating this. S, Z, scale that up. Go ahead and bring that down. S, Z again to scale it. And again, we're just kind of scaling roughly here. Apply that scale and then you guys can increase, sorry, you can add in your bevel modifier. Just increase your segments a little bit. Shade auto smooth. That looks good. That should be pretty much perfect. You guys can make it circular if you want or you can keep it like that. I think that looks perfect. Let's go ahead and snap back to rendered view. That looks great. And I think I'm gonna adjust this material to a darker gray. That looks amazing. Now again, guys, you guys can do whatever you want for this room. I just think this looks cool. All right, for the walls, I think I'm gonna go with a warmer tone for these. So I think I'm gonna just create a new rough material and make these maybe orange or maybe like red potentially. Let's go ahead and copy that to both, both things. Oops. Uh, sh uh, co control L is to copy and we're just gonna link the materials. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that roughness pretty much all the way up. So far, this looks really cool. Now, I don't know if I'm in love with the red. Let me just try blue. And again, we can change the floor color too. I might come back to that floor and I might change it to like this same color that we're working on right now. Maybe just a light blue. That looks kind of nice. Whoops. There we go. Cool. That looks kind of nice. Again, you guys can really adjust this however you want. Um, I could go all day with trying to make this look cool. You can make it metallic. It looks nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm thinking we can probably add in a window here at some point, uh, maybe a little desk. Um, we can pretty much add in anything. Again, this is totally up to you guys with how you wanna do this with your creative freedom. Um, I just, I love messing with this stuff. Also the transmissive material right here, I think I'm gonna give this the slightest orange color, orange yellow color, just the slightest. And then for the roughness, I'm gonna turn that up. And IOR, I'll probably do 1.2. I think that looks pretty nice. Love it, that looks perfect. I'm gonna take the inner cube, I think, and I'm gonna scale it down just a little bit. Where is the inner cube? There it is. Perfect, that looks great, cool. And if you guys want to, you can even add some subsurface to this as well. And make sure you're shading everything. So I'm just gonna literally right click and shade everything auto smooth just for to have it for a scene. Kind of playing with the colors here, trying to get something that I really like. I think that looks nice. Let's see what else do we have here? <laughs> that looks cool too. And again, you guys can really see that depth of field coming in here. I'm going to also increase our pass part out so that we can kind of see our scene a little bit more like how it'll actually look. This looks really, really cool. I think I might make a window in here and I think I might move my lamp to one or the other side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead to my solid view here, guys, and I'm just gonna click on all this stuff. Oh, I just realized this is not reaching. Here we go. One, two, three. Four. All right, and then I'm gonna move that to a new collection, call it lamp. Cool, press okay. And then I'm just going to click on select objects, GX to move them over. And now we have our lamp kind of like over here more or less. It does. It still looks really, really awesome too. Um, I'm wondering if we can make this more of a nighttime scene. Let me go ahead and adjust my HDRI to a nighttime HDRI. Ooh, now it's more like kind of spooky, more or less. It looks cool though. This is looking really, really fun. Um, I think I'm gonna adjust this to make this kind of like more metallic. That looks cool. And then I'm going to click on my inner cube, make this pure white. This looks awesome. There's, just, there's too many creative choices, like seriously. 
Even that's fun. Wow. It's so metallic, maybe a little bit too metallic. That's awesome. Another thing you guys can do is you can change each color of each wall. Like you could make this one like an, an off green or something, or maybe like an off blue. And you can make the floor like a darker color, potentially. Like that. Like that could be kind of cool if you guys wanted to go for something like that. Again, I'm kind of just trying to show you that you can easily add whatever you want to the scene. I could literally spend all day trying to make this look like the way that I want it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention real quick, guys, is that in our in my other folder, I have these other real-time materials by the same guy that made the wood material. He also gave me these amazing materials. Just another quick shout out. These awesome marble materials. Um, let me just go ahead and swap this out real quick. Try another one. That looks pretty cool. There's so many to choose from here, guys. Look at all these. They're amazing. I kind of like this one. I want to try this one for my scene. It's funny because this was originally supposed to be a sculpting session and we completely changed our minds about what we wanted, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and try the pro marble. That is awesome. I love that material. That is so cool. I'm also going to bring my floor up a little bit so it's barely touching the isometric scene here. I just think this looks so, so cool. Uh, let me also minimize my face just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better here. Sorry this tutorial is going on for so long, but I just love messing with these materials. They're so much fun. Um, I might change this to be white instead of the uh, gold lining on the marble. I think that looks really, really nice. Um, and then the other thing, guys, is when it comes to the depth of field, you can clearly adjust that to however you want, but um, your actual orthographic scale is also going to affect that as well. So as of right now, I kind of like where we're at. I think I'm going to start adding maybe a table in here. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, and I'm going to scale this on the x-axis, go to my top-down view, just kind of move it over here, and I think I'm going to put a desk right about there. Move that up. And you guessed it, I'm going to apply a wood shader. Object, apply, scale. Make sure that bevel is good, looking good. Um, actually, that is not the wood shader I want. Let me go back to my shaders real quick, guys. I want a lighter wood. Yeah, that looks good. I think I'm going to go with this one here. Copy that. Go back. We're going to need some more light on our scene here, guys. I think I'm going to create a small desk lamp. I'm just going to duplicate this lamp. Yeah, and then I'm going to literally, or I'm going to click, click on the collection, duplicate collection, and then I'm going to select the objects in that collection, excluding this. Cool. And I'm going to move them up, scale them down. And I'm literally going to scale this all down to make a miniature lamp for our desk. Go this way, GX. And again, this is just for the desk. Perfect, GY. And I'm going to make this brightness crazy for the inside of this thing. All right, right now it's at five. I'm going to put it at 10. And I'm also going to make it a little bit more yellow. And I think I might remove this and make this kind of like one of those lamps that has, um, it has like a hood to it. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Up, scale it on the Y axis like that. G, Y, Z. So yeah, one of these, if you guys have ever seen these style lamps before, where it's like kind of like a bar more or less. So now let's go ahead and take this and turn it into this material. So kind of like that style lamp, if you guys have ever seen that, I think that looks nice. That can be our desk lamp. Again, we're kind of just reusing these materials here. Make sure you apply your scale as well if you had a bevel. Cool, that looks good. Oh, and then also I wanna make sure that the light, uh, it doesn't come out too far. Cool, that's perfect right there. 
What do you guys think? I think that looks nice for, for like a little desk lamp. Yeah, that looks perfect. That's fine. All right, and then for this material, I do want to bring this, brighten this up a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. Specular color. Oh my God, there's so many cool settings you can mess with here. I think that looks good. Now we need some uh, legs for our lamp now, don't we? Are we on GPU? Yes, we are. Look how awesome this already looks though, this fun little room that we've made. All right, let's go ahead and click on this. Let's just duplicate this piece here, right guys? Because what I want to do is I want to duplicate this and I want to use the mirror modifier. And I want to just position these legs however I like. And then we're also going to apply that scale as well. I think that looks fine. Now let's go ahead and add a mirror modifier. And we should be able to select this object and then we should be able to do that. Go ahead and duplicate that. And just like that, we have our four legs. So again, we're using this as our object here. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to tab into edit mode. Oops. Tab out edit mode. Scale that up. GZ. And then I just want to make a smaller version of that. For the for the um, footers there. Again, you guys do not have to do this. This is what I'm choosing to do because I think it looks good. Cool, happy with that. Tab into edit mode. Tab Adam edit mode. Sorry, get rid of that bevel and go ahead and tab into edit mode. Select the corner, the corners, and we're just gonna bevel those in like crazy. Turn on ghost mode, there we go, that's so much easier. One, two, three, four. Bevel those in, like that. And then tab out of edit mode and just add a little subdivision surface modifier to that. And that should be good. Scale that up. Cool, all right, that's fine. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty good, actually. I think I'm happy with that. They're a little out of focus, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. Cool. All right, I guess we need a chair, don't we? Um, let's just design a quick chair the same way we designed this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop my hierarchy down. I'm going to take this and this and this, and I'm going to Shift D to duplicate. X, scale that down, bring it right here, S, Z. S Y. Actually, we're gonna just do that to this, make it more or less pretty square. G X. That looks fine. Again, we're just reusing these assets. It's really easy to do when you reuse things. Um, and then I'm just gonna duplicate this, bring it up, and rotate it 90 degrees. I am going to scale it on the X, sorry, on the Z. I'm gonna to go to my side view, bring it up like right here, maybe a little bit less on the Z. Apply that scale. I'm also going to apply the scale to this as well. And I'm also gonna reduce the bevel a little bit. Yeah, it looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. And then you can just select everything and you can just Tuck that chair right in. Just make sure it's on the floor. Looks good. And then we can go ahead and give that chair some uh, materials. So instead of wood, I'm just gonna give this a nice white shader or maybe, maybe just a slightly blue shader. Copy that over. I think that looks pretty good, more or less. And then if we really wanted to, we could hop into edit mode, tab, select all of the top uh, vertices. Scale them in a little bit. And then we'll just make a quick loop cut here. Bring that up, scale that out just a little bit just to make our chair. I think that looks fine. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Give that a subdivision, bring that up. 
And then we're going to make another loop cut. Bring that down. That looks pretty good. Scale it up. Bring it up. What do you guys think? I feel like that looks pretty good. Maybe bring it back on the X. I think I actually li might have liked it before. Yeah, I'm going to undo all that. Let's see how, how many times I can undo. Again, guys, this is all part of the process. And maybe we could center the chair as well. A little bit more. That looks good. Cool. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. And then chair is white. That looks fine. Maybe these could also be some kind of white material. And then these could be the same as that. Eh, I think I like it. I don't know. Maybe it should be a little bit bigger overall. That seems pretty fair. Cool. I'm pretty happy with that. What do you guys think? So far, so good. I mean, again, you guys can go in here and you can customize this as much as you choose. This is what I'm enjoying so far. I've got the desk lamp, I've got the chair. The chair is a little abstract, but I like it. The lamp is pretty big. I think I might scale that in just a little bit. Make it a little taller. I think that looks pretty good. <laughs> it's a very abstract room. This is not, it's not perfect, but I do like it. I'm going to go back to my shading tab. I am going to adjust my rotation here of my lighting. That looks kind of nice. Again, guys, lighting is kind of everything. <laughs> looks good. And then I want to show you guys one more trick that I have up my sleeve before we like keep wrapping this up. I want to go ahead and add in a um, an icosphere, scale that up. Go ahead and add a new material, glass, save that, and then add a subdivision surface modifier, shade auto smooth, go back to our scene, scale this sphere up even more. Cool, so that it's outside of our camera bounds. Now, as you guys can see, it's created much more diffused lighting. Look at the lighting right here. Difference before, after. And then if you click on your icosphere and you adjust that, that roughness, you can actually get this to the point where you're actually adjusting your lighting in your scene. So, what might work? Again, it's just a little trick. Just add one more subdivision to that. You guys do absolutely do not have to do this. This is just something I choose to do for a lot of my scenes because it adds a much more diffused lighting look. Cool. And then again, we can kind of go in here and adjust the depth of field more as well. We can target something like the chair. Looks pretty good. And if you guys really want to get down to it, you can really get some intense depth of field by turning down that f-stop. But I think this looks really good. So I think I might go with this. Sorry, let me... Let's make this bigger for Instagram so you guys can see that a little bit better. Yeah, I'm I'm liking the way this looks so far. I mean, I could probably go all day about just adjusting the colors here. I could create a more white marble look, a darker marble. That looks kind of cool. It's kind of fun. Maybe we could create a colored marble. Like a light blue darker blue that looks pretty cool wow I, I'm just I'm I love this stuff it's so much fun to mess with this stuff I do kind of think that these these legs here could probably be a different material though and we could make this wood I just don't know what material is this I'll make this the same just want everything to look like correct What material could we make this, guys? I 
Light blue is kind of nice. I could go for a light blue. We could add a little computer on there. I don't really know what else I really want to add to the room. I mean, I kind of like it. Maybe like some small paintings on the wall. It's the only thing I can really think of. Like you could take one of these walls right here, duplicate it, scale it way down, place it on your wall like that. And then you can apply that scale. And maybe we'll just lower that bevel a little bit. That looks good, GX. Now, you don't have to put anything on this painting, but you can kind of just have it be there on the wall. Just make it nice and metallic, low roughness, just have it be this, it could almost be a mirror. But I just wanted to show you guys how you can quickly add things to the scene like this. That looks good. Cool. Um, and then you guys can uh, make like an array modifier for this one. You know what we could? We could cut out a window right here. Okay, let me just see something. S, Y. So if you wanted to, you guys could cut out a window right here, right? Let's go ahead and just see if this works. So I'm just going to add in a Boolean modifier. Go ahead and select this. And if we just hide that. You can see you have like a little window, um, but what you could do is click on this one, add in an array modifier, get rid of the bevel, and then just make this one like that, duplicate that, and just have it go down on the Z axis, right there, just like that. Now if we hide this, now we have a nice little window. And you guys of course can adjust this however you need to. You can make these closer. You can scale this down, right? You can add one more to each side if you'd like a multi-panel window, something like that. Just trying to show you guys the options that you have at your disposal. Oops, we need to extend these out on the Y axis. Cool. And then like just like that, you can cut out a window. Pretty cool, right? And if you guys really wanted it to look like a window, you could do this. You could add in one more thing, which would be like a piece of glass in there. So let me just scale this up a little bit. Move it like right there. Let me just hide it and just add in a plane. Scale that down. We're just going to flip it like that. Move it over here into our wall. Scale that up. And then we're just gonna make that our window pane. So I'm just gonna go over to rendered view and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new glass material. And then you can just adjust the roughness from there. That's zero roughness up to like a higher roughness. That looks pretty good. And then the IOR you can do like 1.5, whatever you guys want. Looks pretty cool though. Pretty easy to do. Um, so I think I like that, it looks kind of nice. Just like a nice little isometric room design. Yeah, it's fun. Huh. I kind of like it. Maybe you could add, uh, the only other thing I would really add to that is just a, a little window sill. So you could go ahead and take this piece here, duplicate it, RX90, go ahead and scale it, SZ. Go ahead and hide, I'm gonna hide this big icosphere so I can use my side view here, SZ. And just like that, you have a, well, kind of have a window, so almost. Let's go ahead and go to rendered view. We're just gonna create a new material here. Make it white, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and add a mirror modifier to this. Mirror, <clears throat> and then click on your plane, I guess. Yep, that looks fine. Go ahead and duplicate it again. Move it up and in, R, Y, 90 and then change this to Y, bring it up, oops, GZ, GX, scale it on the X, that looks fine, and then bring it forward on the Y, and just like that you have a little window frame. Now we're gonna need to adjust this a little bit, GZ,
pretty much perfect. I mean, you guys can really fine tune this however you'd like, but I think that looks good for the window frame. Again, guys, this is just me like quickly scrapping some stuff together for this isometric design. Try my best to just make something fun for you guys so you guys can use it as like an example for what you might do in your project. But I think this looks really cool. Um, I'll probably just add one more thing. I'm gonna add some molding. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this and bring it down. I'm just going to scale this down on the Z axis, bring it down, and then S, Y to scale even more. Again, this is gonna act as a piece of molding here. Let's go ahead to a rendered view. I think I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this molding material onto this, and then I'm gonna copy this. Um, RZ90, cool. And I'm gonna bring it against this wall here. Yeah, and again, guys, this is just molding, like pieces of molding for the ground here. And I think it looks pretty cool. Like I said, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I might make these two the same material. At the end of the day, it's really all about personal preference. <laughs> might turn this back into wood, make it look a little bit more normal. God, there's just so many things to choose from. <laughs> the marble kind of looks cool, honestly, for the for the floor. I actually kind of like that. Can I adjust that scale? Scale, scale, scale. Yeah, I can adjust the scale if I want to. Oh, that's cool. I might just do a marble floor for that and then make this one like white or something. Make this one metallic low roughness. Again, it's totally up to you guys what you do. I thought, I think this looks cool. We can go with something like this. It's just so much fun just to mess with the materials. Like it's so much fun. You can do like an off color for your molding. Slightly orange, slightly yellow. Literally so much that you can do. I kind of like a lighter tone actually. Maybe just a slight gray guys. This is changing so dramatically that I, I can't keep track. This is awesome though. I love this. This thing right here, what could this be? I feel like this should be a painting. Here, hold on, let me just go ahead and add in an image as planes. Go to my random images folder and let's just find a quick painting to add up here on the wall. Love it. Let's go ahead and RX90. Oops, sorry. RY90. And let's go ahead and align it to our painting here. S, S, Y. We're just going to stretch it just a little bit. And then we're going to move it over on the X axis. So it's barely touching the surface there. And as you guys can see, we have our painting. Very, very simple. Nice little painting in our room there. We have our marble floor. I think for the marble floor, I might make it white, like a light white color. Man, this thing is really coming together slowly but surely. Um, also for the scale of this, I might adjust that as well. Where is the scale, 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 scale. Um, shout out to the guy that made these materials. I cannot wait to include that link in the description. He's just incredible. Incredibly talented. Um, I need to pop this out more so I can see the scale. Hold on. Scale, scale, scale. Oh, here it is. Oh, no, that's the scratches. Hold on. I know it's in there somewhere. Um, overall scale. Maybe I'm just stupid and I don't know how to do this. Whoa. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I like that. Hold on. Oh. Oh, that's nice. You can adjust. Oh, look at that. You can literally adjust that. That is incredible. Well done. So customizable. I think that looks nice, though. That, that is incredible how customizable that is. Wow. Um, now, do we want to also kind of take this and make this just a slighter, a different material? Maybe make this white. Maybe like a metallic white material. Slightly brighter.
This is just so much fun. I love doing this. I love it. Um, the other thing we could do if we really wanted to push this thing to the next level is we could take our molding. We could duplicate that. Bring it out on the y-axis. Rotate it our Z90. And then scale it on the X. And bring it over on the X. Scale it on the X again. Cool. Just bring it in there. And then go ahead and apply that scale. Now, as you can see, it kind of wraps around like that. I just thought that looked kind of cool. It was just a fun little addition there. And I think I might duplicate that and bring it over on the other side. Cool. Make sure you guys always are applying your scale. That's super, super important. The only thing really missing is like some kind of a laptop potentially. And then I think I'm gonna adjust this color even more back to like maybe a pure white potentially. This is just so much fun to mess with though. <laughs> just a fun little isometric room. Are you guys enjoying this as much as I am? I love, I just love this process. It's just so much fun to do. You can literally do anything. I feel like the chair is kind of standing out too much to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that saturation down. I'm also going to adjust the chair a little bit more. Guys, I tend to do this a lot where I, where I think I'm happy with something, but I'm like truly not. Adjust it a little bit more like that. This is pretty good though. Like I'm pretty happy with it for the most part, but again, it, something can always be improved in my book. Like even these could probably come out just a little bit more to the edge. Oops. I'm gonna adjust both of those. Cool, that looks good. Pretty happy with it. Again, it's a really simple room. Um, we should probably make a laptop. So let me just go ahead and scale this up. Go ahead and duplicate that GZ and then RY90. And let's just go ahead and bring that up here. This can be our little our little laptop. Should make sure it's not touching the ground. Object apply scale and object apply scale. Cool, let's go ahead and uh, make this screen emissive. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and add another um, image as planes node, or uh, image. Let me just go ahead and find something that looks like a cool background. How about, I could probably pick one of my artworks or we can just pick something random and, and abstract. I think I kind of like this one, it's kind of colorful. Oh, I like this one. All right, here's our image. Let's go ahead and rotate it on the Y axis, 90. Let's go ahead and move it towards our screen and scale it down a bunch. Move it right here. Go to this view. Scale it up. And we're gonna move it back on the X axis. Now to make it actually emit light, we're just gonna go back to the shading tab. We are going to zoom in on that. Go ahead to our object mode here. And then we're just gonna go ahead and delete this principal BSDF, add in an emission shader, plug in our color from our image into the emission shader and then the emission into the surface. Now this should be emitting light. Just like that, we are emitting light. Now for our keyboard, oh, I guess I'll just do a really quick array of buttons here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this, scale it down a bunch on the Y, and then I'm just gonna move it here, move it up. Now this is gonna act as our keys here. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna really scale that down. You're not really probably gonna be, be able to barely see these, but I'm just gonna show you guys what you would do to create this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and create an array. I'm just gonna 
bump that up a few times, scale these out like such. That's probably fine. And then duplicate your array and go ahead and uh, change this to the Y. Go ahead and do the same thing, scale these out nicely. That's probably okay, right? I think that's fine. Just enough to give it like some substance there. Oops. Something like that. Perfect. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this one more time. And I'm gonna scale it up for the trackpad. Scale that up even more. Make sure you're applying your scale. And then I'm just gonna move it. Scale Z. And just like that, we should have something that looks kind of nice. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change the vibe of these keys to be black. And then this, we can just duplicate that. Raise that roughness up a little bit. This looks great. Just a nice little laptop that we just created there. Just really, really simple. Um, again, guys, you can go all day about like adjusting this to your liking. You guys can add more materials. You can add more things. I'm loving the way this is starting to look. Um, it's just a fun little scene. We have a window, and what's great is we can customize the window. The lamp is looking pretty solid overall. Excuse me. It looks really good. Um, I think I'm actually going to take the saturation out of the lamp now that we've started to define our actual um, our vibe here. It's just looking really nice. You have the molding wrapping around. You know what we also could do that I'm tempted to just do right now, just because I keep adding to this at this point? Let's just go ahead and duplicate this. This is our molding. I'm going to go to my side view, bring it down, SX. Now, I think I just want to create just a little metallic border to kind of make this thing look like it is uh, kind of like containing itself, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining that properly. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and just see what this is going to look like. So this will be like our little border. Um, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Um, RZ90, bring it over here. I'm just trying my best to make this look really, really nice. Cool. And then what we can do is take these two pieces, maybe make them potentially metallic, and just see what that could look like. Let's go ahead and just take a look. Or we could take these and make them the color of our molding again. Um, I'm just trying to experiment here, kind of see what we can get this to look like. There's a lot of materials going on here, and there's a lot of things that we can do. You could even make these two pieces marble. You know, really take it to the next level, or you could take these and just make them this material if you wanted to. Just a lot of fun little pieces going on here. And this thing is kind of floating above our surface, but I kind of like that. Um, it's kind of the vibe I'm going for. Are these at the same height? Yeah, I think they are. Guys, I'm loving this. I, I am loving the way this is looking. Make sure everything's looking solid here. Um, it's good to always check the spacing between like your surfaces. Like that was clipping through the floor, so I'm glad I adjusted that. This is just a fun little isometric scene. I, are you guys enjoying this? I hope you are. Let me get a quick sip of water. Uh, it looks like we spent about an hour on this. I love this. This is just a nice, fun, cozy room. Um, I think I'm going to zoom my camera in. Or I'm going to bring my camera down a little bit, zoom in. Again, when I'm doing this, I'm holding shift so that you guys can really fine tune like how you're zooming into the scene. Um, this looks really nice. I like it. I want to create some contrast between the background. Um, you can do that by just making a different colored background, like a darker black or something like that. Um, I kind of want to render this out and just see how it looks. It's just... I just love the way this turned out. It, this, it just looks so cool. And I think I'm actually going to also apply some like overlay effects in Photoshop potentially to really push this thing to the next level. 
Um, the only other thing I can think of that I would that I would add is maybe like maybe more molding, maybe a corner molding piece. I'm trying to think. Just thinking out loud here, guys, with like what we can do to to make this thing look awesome. There is one more thing we could do. Let me go ahead and duplicate this one more time. Bring it up on the z-axis. Scale it on the z-axis. Whoops, wrong way. Object apply scale. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do, if you guys ever seen trim around a room, like just some very, very subtle trim, that's basically what I just made here. Um, and then I think I'm just gonna see how that looks and see if it fits the vibe of the room. Looks like our window would need, we would need to make this go below our window. And then I think I could also wrap it around as well. Um, I do think it looks really good. I just need to make sure that it's like a good color. Maybe just a slight gray. Again, I'm going to take this, duplicate it, RZ90 again, and just bring it up against this wall. Let's just see how that looks. That looks kind of nice. It might not be the vibe. If you wanted to, you could just have it be more of a part of the bottom molding and wrap around. It's debatable whether or not I would actually want to do that. Um, guys, I'm pretty happy with this. I don't know. I kind of like it. Is there anything else we could add to this scene? I mean, we have, I mean, we could add like a small rug, a dog, or maybe a cat potentially. I don't know. I, I really like what we have going here. I really do. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we could possibly add. Turn off this grid. This looks really, really cool though. What do you guys think so far? Everybody happy? Probably missed a bunch of questions on the live stream. I apologize, but again, kind of trying to vibe with this. I think it's looking really, really cool. We got a chair, we got a desk, we got a lamp. We could add a quick outlet. It's the only other thing I can think of off the top of my head right now. I'm just gonna duplicate the trackpad because that's probably the closest thing to the size that I'm looking for. Cool. Watch this, ready? Outlet. There's like a perfect image of it. Oops, I should have saved that to my downloads. Let's literally go here. Um, add image, image as planes, go to my downloads. <laughs> oh my god, I, cr I literally cracked myself up. Let me see if we can even see that. 
You can barely see it, but it's there. It's there. It's just funny. It's just funny. I will literally add that into the scene. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. All right, uh, we got a desk lamp. I don't know. I, I like, I think I like the scene. I'm pretty happy with it overall. Maybe a small ledge for the windowsill. I mean, other than that, you can add a little ledge to the windowsill. Go ahead and get rid of that mirror modifier. What do you guys think? I mean, I know I got four people left in here, but I think this is looking really, really fun. Should we turn off the depth of field? Yeah, I guess we will. That's fine. For now, we can turn it off. We can always add it in post if we want to. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Cool, cool. Everybody happy with this? I, I think it looks awesome. It's modern, it's fun. We have a painting up there. We have a um, we have a lamp, a desktop computer, or like a little laptop, a chair. I mean, we could add a cup if we want to. Just add in a cylinder. Scale that down. Bring it over here. Scale it down even more. Go ahead and Inset that top face. Oops, sorry. Inset, there we go. And we're just going to bring it down. And we're just going to add a slight bevel to that and a edge split. Where is edge split? And a subdivision surface. Go ahead and shade that auto smooth. Adjust that bevel a little bit. And we're just going to go ahead and give that a glass shader. What's that? We need liquid in there? I guess we kind of do. Um... And we'll just make that a glass shader. Blue. With zero roughness and shade auto smooth. It's like way too blue, but. That's fine. What do you guys think? A little glass of water on there, the wooden desk. The chair. I mean, there's not really a lot of crazy stuff to this, but I feel like there's a lot to be learned with the isometric view. Um, and this tutorial has gone on for way too long. But again, I'm trying to cover like stuff that I feel like people are going to want to learn about. Um, I can't really think of anything else. I mean, you can add anything you guys want to your scene. I was just trying to show like in really simple way to actually create like an isometric scene like this. I do hope you guys enjoyed this. I enjoyed putting this together. Um, it was a lot of fun. It's very simple, but I still think it's very, very fun to just create a scene like this. So um, I might modify it more. We'll see. Um, just kind of staring at it right now, figuring out if there's anything else I want to do with it. We have some nice materials in use here. 
Um, the walls look great. The molding looks great. The only other thing I can think of is maybe to turn these into the marble material. I guess that looks kind of nice and I kind of like that. Um, and then the background itself, like what, what this is sitting on. Again, you guys don't have to have this sitting on anything. In fact, you can literally have it be just floating in the air or you guys can create a very nice um, scene like this. Like you, there's just literally so many things you can do. And not to mention, you can also pull the floor up closer to your actual edge of your objects, which is what I'm doing right now. It's tough because you want to, uh, you want it to look awesome, but it's you could spend all day just trying to get everything to look correct. Where's the other marble material? This is that one marble material, but I kind of want to choose the darker one. Well, part of me does. Hold on, let me go back. Let me open the pro marble again. Oh, this is the darker one right here. This is the gray one. That one's kind of cool. I think I like this one. Let me just copy this over again. <laughs> that looks so cool. I dig that. Oh my gosh, I dig that. Huh, that's sick. And then if we want to, we can adjust this. Or hold on, instead of that, we'll do hue 0.48 potentially. Some nice blue in there. Oh, it looks so cool. I don't know, I think that looks nice. I'm gonna go back to the camera and re-enable depth of field real quick because I just wanna see what this could look like. Wow. Um, another thing I think I might do is in the compositing tab, just enable the nodes, add in a viewer node here, and then I'm gonna add in a lens distortion, just like that. And I'm gonna make this value point zero one, and then I'm going to go to my render settings We'll do 150 samples, denoising, we'll just do optics. And then let's go ahead and just mess around with the light path settings on the right hand side here. I'm gonna set everything to five. And let's go ahead and render this thing. And let's just see what this looks like um, rendered out and kind of go from there and figure out what we wanna do here. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I did not realize my phone just shut off for a second. Apologies. This is the scene we're working on right now. It looks cool. Oh, it just finished rendering. Oh, the window thing is still showing. I need to make sure that's not showing. All right, let's try this again. Very cool. Um, I probably could do uh, like a little bit better with the overall rendering and stuff. Like we probably turn the settings up, turn the um, actual resolution up. But overall, that's pretty much the tutorial, guys. As you can see, that took about 15 seconds to render there. So not too bad. Um, and you guys, like I said, can turn your resolution up however high you want. You don't have to have depth of field enabled. You guys have full creative freedom. I just wanted to show you how to create a simple isometric scene. I do hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.